is Dr. Clayton Lane. This video will be about hip impingement and its arthroscopic management. The technical word for hip impingement is femoroacetabular impingement, shortened often to FAI. There's two types of impingement, one coming from what's called a cam lesion and the other a pincer. And to understand that, you have to realize that the hip is a deep ball and socket joint, unlike many other joints in the body. I often liken it to a trailer and hitch with a deep cup and a ball, uh, often constraining its range of motion and limiting how far it can go before the metal contacts metal and a jackknife occurs in, in that case. If you can imagine in the human body, what if bone built up on either the ball or the cup side of a trailer? Um, here we have a hip drawing from the lateral view. You can see the normal contour is concave in the neck. What if we had build up of bone there as is seen here? This is called a cam lesion. So this small build up of bone as the hip rotates in is going to make contact with the cup and that is hip impingement. Now you can also have build up on this side which is what would be referred to as a pincer lesion. Now we've been treating this for decades uh, surgically however what that's involved in the past is hip dislocation and uh, this animation makes it look fairly benign even when you really start to consider uh, intraoperative photos in which bones have to be cut, muscles have to be cut and retracted and I would refer to this as maximally invasive surgery. With the advent of arthroscopy however we have another option. Now we've been uh, scoping so to speak other joints since the 80s but the hip arthroscopy has really just developed over the last 10 years and the reason is because the hip is such a deep ball and socket joint and it has so much musculature around it as well as uh, very strong ligaments which limit its motion and limit our ability to get inside that joint. We have developed some very standardized techniques now with specialized tables called traction tables. So with this table, rather than dislocating the hip, what we can do is apply traction in the perfect direction to increase the space between the ball and the cup and allow us to get very small, minimally invasive uh, instruments into the hip. So here you can see as we put traction on the hip, we've created a little space to get in there. We can then insert a five millimeter camera as well as a five millimeter instrument and begin working inside the hip without ever dislocating it. And this is done through two one centimeter incisions. So here we have our case example for today. It's a 17 year old varsity basketball player. He's had pain for nine months with abduction of the hip. He's had no response to stretching and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications and this is limiting his play. It's going into his senior year. He has a positive impingement test in the office and what that means is as I rotate his hip uh, inwards and flex his hip up, this bone here contacts the acetabulum and causes him severe pain and reproduces his symptoms. Here you can see a lateral view of his hip as well where that bump continues. I'll outline that bump in red. Again, this is what's called the cam lesion. And what we're going to need to do in this surgery is remove that cam lesion and contour his hip back to a normal concave shape uh, as the femoral neck should be. Now he also has a little bit of a pincer lesion as well. Really what it is in his case is the labrum, the soft tissue here is actually calcified and that's going to cause impingement as well. So we're going to want to trim that during surgery. Here we are interoperatively. Now we have a special x-ray called fluoroscopy which allows us to actually move the bones while we're x-raying and also move our instruments. So here you can see my five millimeter camera coming into place. You can see the joint space that we've created by applying traction to the hip and here you see a small burr coming into position as well. And then what we're going to do is localize the uh, pincer lesion and begin working on the cup side or pincer lesion first with this burr. Here we have the actual surgical video of our case example. You can see I'm using the small round burr to remove the pincer lesion which is on the cup side of the hip and we're removing all the uh, torn calcified labrum as well. Once we think we're happy with the resection then I'll insert some type of instrument. In this case it was a metal shoehorn and I'm going to mark out where we've been working and then use the camera to follow myself around the cup to ensure that we've removed every impinging piece of bone on the pincer side of the lesion. 
Here you see that shoehorn on x-ray and video and you can see as I rotate around to inspect the level of my resection of the pincer lesion. Once that's done what we'll do is release traction. It's a little bit hard to see here but the joint space has narrowed down because we've removed the traction. Now you can see the bump or cam lesion on the femur and we're going to begin work in that area. And what you're going to see in this part of the video is the burr uh, slowly contouring the femoral neck back to where it should be. You can also see incidentally the level of resection on the pincer side in this uh, x-ray image as well as you can see that there's very little joint space once we let that traction off. So here you see me working on the ball of the hip. I'm working right along the cartilage margin there to remove that cam lesion which is really on the neck of the femur. And the nice thing about this with the traction off, now I can actually take the hip through a range of motion and directly visualize any points of bony impingement. I'll actually do the impingement test in which I flex the hip and internally rotate it and see if there's any bone left that could cause him pain postoperatively. Postoperatively, the patient was kept uh, partial weight bearing for a couple of weeks and then progressed his weight bearing status. He was eager to play at six weeks. We finally cleared him for play at eight weeks. And at six weeks, he rated his pain at zero out of 10. And here you can see his postoperative x ray again. This is a normal concave appearance to the anterior superior neck, somewhat like what you see on the other side. Additionally, that pincer lesion is completely gone. So if we compare that to his pre op, there you see that pincer lesion. There you see the cam lesion. And now, it's more of a normal contour. Pre-op, post-op. Here we have our patient in action at 12 weeks post-op. He's very happy with the function of his hip and it would be hard to imagine him doing this after a surgical hip dislocation of the path. So in summary, hip impingement is the abnormal contact between the hip ball and socket due to buildup of bone on either side. Hip arthroscopy allows treatment of this complex bone problem through small one centimeter incisions. Thank you.